So what is going on everybody, my name is Mehul and welcome back and in this video we'll see why we need this nice little file which is created called package.packagelock.json. So in the last video we saw how semantic versioning works, right? Version 16.13.1, all that stuff. Now a lot of people who have been using npm from version 5, that is, we are using npm version 6 right now. A lot of people who have been using npm version 5 and, you know, more than that, don't really know that there was no package lock.json file before npm 5. And why? I don't know why, but I think I understand why they did not choose it. Because npm wanted to follow semantic versioning, right? Now hear me out on this video. When you have a project like this, and if you do not have node modules folder with you, but you do have these two files, let's let's just forget about package lock. Let's just remove that for, as a matter of fact, right? You do have this package.json file, right? So if you see that it includes lodash as a dependency, so you know, uh, NPM knows that lodash is required for this project. So what happens is that when you run NPM install, it's going to read this package.json file. It's going to scan through all the dependencies and it's going to install all of them. In an ideal world, what should happen is that, for example, if you have an old version of Lodash here, for example, 4.0.0 or 4.1.0, and there's this new version of Lodash available that is 4.17.15. In an ideal world, what should happen is that npm should be really able to update this patched version you see not the major version the patch version that is it should be able to change that version from 4.0.0 to 4.17.15 so what i'm saying is let's see uh let's hope that there's a version out there oops i think i'm doing something wrong anyway let's hope there's a version out there which starts with 4.0.0 of Lodash, right? Now, if I go ahead and write npm install, or let me just go ahead and move the node modules folder first. Now, if I go ahead and write npm install, what's, what's going to happen is that it's going to scan the package.json file. It's going to read all the dependencies and it's going to install them one by one. But pay close attention what happens to our package.json. So if I go ahead and write package.json now, you're gonna see that my Lodash is actually 4.0.0 only fine nothing changed there let's go to node modules and let's open lodash and let's see the package.json file inside lodash whoops you see that we actually have installed 4.17.15 as the lodash version we did not install 4.0.0 why is that that is because how npm was designed to work when you do an npm install what happens it goes to package.json it asks for all the packages inside the dependencies and it says well you are 4.0.0 okay let me just go ahead and see the maximum version i which to which i can update you without actually breaking you right so this caret right here has a special meaning we'll get to that later but what what uh, npm does is that it ask npm registry hey this guy is running a very old version of lodash uh, to which version we can update this guy so that you know things don't burn but he's running on some latest shit as well so npm says okay this is 4.17 go ahead and use this so what it does is that it keeps it here as 4.0.0 for reasons unknown i don't know maybe npm should update it here as well but yeah they just keep it here and what it do what they do is that they actually install the the higher upgraded version of the package now from my previous video you know that developers are actually insane and they do not follow semantic versioning in an ideal world this should create no problems because the major update to the package should only add new features and this should only fix uh compatible bugs right but this is not the case in the real world so people found that a lot of times when they just simply wrote npm install on a different system than the one in which they were developing, 
their whole builds crashed, right? The packages did not work, you know, there were incompatibilities, all that stuff was happening. Why was that? Because on their main systems, while they actually had the real 4.0.0 installed, because they installed it way, way back when there was no 4.17 release, now, in the future, when they changed systems and they did npm install on package.json, well, this still remained 4.0.0, but uh, because npm the way npm works they updated it to 4.17 point whatever the version was and that caused the builds to break because developers weren't following semantic versioning so this is the reason uh this is like one of the reasons package.json was introduced package log.json so if you see this this file package log.json you're gonna see that usually you'll find that this file is very very large and um, for the most part you never really need to open this file at all but yeah right now you can see that our dependencies inside package log.json you see we have the correct version and we do not have that caret symbol as well we also have the url stored from where it was installed exactly and we have the sha 512 integrity hash in case we want to install it again so yeah that's the that's the main idea that package log.json is going to hold um, each and every dependency and that that would become very much clear if I add a dependency like Express because Express has a lot of its own dependencies, right? So now if I go ahead and take a look at package.json You're gonna see that Express is running on 4.17.1, right? But if I go ahead and look under package lock.json, you're gonna see we have all sorts of dependencies Now why is that? What are all these dependencies? You see that if I go ahead inside node modules, you're gonna see we get a lot of different folders as well. Now, why are they present? We only needed express. So you see that express, if you take a look inside package.json of express, you're gonna see it itself needs these many packages, right? So it needs these packages. So it needs all these packages. So they are also installed as a requirement for our project. And you see, that what happens is with semantic versioning because express is using some packages we are using express if i update express to a if a, uh, to a newer version if npm install updates it to a newer version it might happen that that effect cascades into the linked dependencies and everything could set on fire right because nobody's respecting semantic versioning so what package log.json does is that when you install a package it will not only you know, just lock that package in space and time, it will also lock all the other packages used by that particular package as well in space and time. So you have the version number locked, you have the actual URL from where it was fetched as locked, and you have the integrity of the file locked as well. So you see all those packages are locked. Express is locked with the requires as well. That is what it requires as an individual package. And all these packages as, are listed as well. So yeah, that's that's the reason why package lock.json was needed. Um, I know it's a long video, but it's important to understand why it is needed. The only reason it is needed is that when you change systems, when you shift um, the environments, you want a consistent module behavior. You do not want to work with debug 2.3.1 in development and suddenly you are using 2.6.9 in production, right? Because it might very well happen that 2.6.9 is not backwards compatible with 2.3.1. It should have been compatible if debug was following the semantic versioning, but unfortunately, most of the developers do not follow that. That is why NPM has to bring package lock.json. And that is why it did not had this feature baked in from the very start because Obviously, it expected developers to follow uh, semantic versioning, which should not have broken the things in the first place. Oof. So yeah, that's, that's basically it for this video. I'm going to see you pretty soon in the next one.